everyone, this is Shelly with Life Creates Art and Art Lover 101. This is for you, this is your request. Today we're gonna to be working on blending and how do you blend? I'm gonna be showing you just some of the few ways that I work on blending. And first of all, we're gonna be doing some of the bigger ways, just a couple of bigger ways that I do backgrounds and blend those and uh, dry and wet. And then I'm gonna show you just a little bit of blending on some of my more detailed work. But first of all, before we get started on that, I want you to check out a couple of different things. Holidays are coming up and we have our kit store and it just brings you right into Amazon. But these are things that we have specifically chosen for you and they have uh, gifts and painting supplies and all kinds of uh, crafts, things that, that, oh, and gifts for people who are hard to buy for. So it's down below our kit.com store. Please check it out and uh, go shopping and get your crafts and get your art supplies. Also, number two, our blog. We have a special blog and it's gonna, we're gonna put it in the uh, links down below. It's really fun. We're having a lot of fun with our blog. So uh, check it out, lots of great stories. Anyway, now we're gonna move on to our blending. So Art Lover 101 asked about blending and they wanted to see how to blend. So the first one that I'm going to do, and we're gonna cut here and uh, go on to our, uh, just specifically on this screen, but the first one is going to be specifically dry on dry. So let's get to that. All right, so what I mean by dry on dry is my brush is completely dry and my paint has no water in it. So my canvas also has no water and it's not prepared in any way. And so dry on dry. And this gives you a little bit of a, a rougher look. So I'm just gonna start by blending the paint on the top. And this look will give you more of a sharp look. I want it dark on the top, and then I'm going to not add any more paint, but I'm going to just start to smooth it down and it'll thin out as it goes down, lower and lower and lower. You see how it's starting to lighten up? Now I really want to lighten it up, and I'm just so you know, I'm using Artist Loft on this. It is, oh gosh, I can't see it without my glasses. Uh, this is a brilliant blue. And I'm also gonna use Artist Loft, a little bit of white. And so I am going to combine, I'm going to blend a little bit. I'm not gonna add any water. You can see my plate here. And that makes that really pretty color. So I'm just gonna bring that in and start to bring that down. I have not added any water to this. Bring that down. I wanna add a little more white the further that I go down. And I love how this just creates these different shades. You can kind of play with it. Now, something I want to show you here, and let's see if I can find a nice brush that's still dry. Um, let me use this one. I wanna show you this. So see what I did right here, where I kind of did the cross brushes? This is also a very nice technique in blending, and it creates a really nice texture when you're blending. Because you see here, I had the white, but underneath is that blue still. And so it creates that nice texture. And these are great to create backgrounds where you just blend all of these colors together. You still have that dark at the top and the light towards the bottom. And so this is dry. I have not added any water to my brush. And if I want to, oh, look at my hand. That's funny. It's gonna spill all over my hand. You can add a little more texture to it and kind of play with it. And kind of use your brush, 
just stab at it and play a lot, play, play around with it and have some fun. So blending. I'm gonna add a little more white to this so that I'm comfortable with the way that I've left it. <laughs> Blending is trial and error and having a lot of fun with your paints. I'm working on the portrait. If you have watched my portrait series and it has taken, I, I can't say that I've ever had this much trouble with uh, blending the face colors, but it's trial and error and you have to just keep going and keep trying. And the great thing about acrylics is they're very forgiving and you can keep going and it will, it will forgive you for your uh, transgressions. Now, next, so this is dry on dry. Next, I'm going to do wet. Wet on wet. I am actually going to use the same colors, but I'm gonna wet my brush and then wipe down my canvas. This gives you a more smooth look and it's dripping down on my other one, but that's okay. So I'm just wetting down my canvas a little bit. Then I'm going to Take my paints, I'm gonna add some water to it. First I'm gonna use my blue. This is almost a watercolor look. So you see how it's already given me a, a watercolor look? I love this. Love, love, love this. So I'm gonna wipe this off a little bit and then without even dipping it in the white, I can start bringing this down a little bit because the water is helping me blend and smoothing that out and thinning it out. And look at that, isn't that beautiful? But if I wanted to add more paint, because what you have to do is you really do want your paint to last on the canvas. Uh, the molecules are very thin when there's not a lot of paint here. So I like to add more paint. But I wet my brush and the canvas is still nice and wet. And you just blend all that in there. And again, play with it, have some fun. Add some texture. Got a little brush in there. So wet on wet, wet on wet can mask uh, being very much like watercolor and then dry on dry can give you a much more thicker opaque look. Now I'm going to wipe off my hand and then we're going to work on the more detailed look. All right, so the thing about art is that it can be kind of messy and that's okay. <laughs> it's, it's a process that is very fun and uh, if you're gonna wear clothes that are, that are can't get messy, then just don't do the art. Uh, have art clothes and have an apron that you can wipe your hands on and a towel that you can wipe your hands on and have a great time. So this is something that I'm gonna work on, probably going to give it away as a Christmas gift. And um, I actually have done something here just for the sake of the video that I normally would not do. And that is I have outlined it with a permanent marker, but I just wanted you to really see the lines. Now on my plate, I've got kind of a flesh color and I just use Craft Smart paints, uh, the little Craft Smart paints for this to get this started and then just to show you uh, what I was gonna do. But I want to, talk about blending 
as you saw on my video for my portrait, I talked about uh, being in a funeral home and adding uh, the essence of, of blood flowing underneath the skin. But with this one, this one's going to be uh, a very different look. I'm not going to necessarily make this look like a human face, even though I've got a flesh color here, but I want to blend in different colors. For example, I wanna mix these two colors together which will add kind of kind of an odd, look at that, that's kind of icky, but that's okay. You know why that's okay? Because it's painting and it's art and you're okay. If you, if you do something that you don't like, for example, on my last portrait, right on camera, I painted this kid's, um, his, shirt, this gross gold color, because his school colors are gold and maroon and black. And I hated it. It's gross. And I'm going to have to repaint it. But that's okay. It's acrylics and you can paint right over it. So don't beat yourself up too much. But what I wanted to do was to especially show you since we're doing blending, how you can create a combination of these two colors. So mixing those together, once this dries a little bit, this is kind of a thinner paint. Once this dries a little bit, I may bring this up here a little more. It's got a little red on the paintbrush and I'll add a little bit more to it and maybe a couple of coats. I really, What I really want is for this to be sort of a lot of different colors and I will show you in the end what I have done and created, but I want to blend it all together. So I want the red to transition nicely into this sort of aqua color. And you could do that. Now my, my paint did not have any water in it, neither did my brush. So this is a dry on dry. And if I wanted to thin it out a little bit, I probably could. So I'm gonna dip my brush a little bit in, but see, look what happened. It thinned out my paint a little bit too much and it's creating these lines with my brush. And I really don't like that. So I'm gonna dry my brush a little bit more and I may need a few minutes for this to dry so I can work on blending this a little bit more. And sometimes the harsh transitions are okay like this, but then you want to just smooth it over gently. Like this. And there we go. See, that's a nice little blend. Now, like I said, later on, I want, I really actually want it to be kind of this aqua color but it needs to dry, this first coat needs to dry a little bit before I can really have that color bounce out onto the canvas. So now let's try adding a little bit of highlight. Let's try it here. Let's try a little dark around this little sinus area. I'm adding a little water and then I'm adding some red under here. Almost so it looks like a little cheek area. Now I'm going to take my little flesh color. Now my flesh color, I generally like to make my flesh color out of a yellow and uh, a white and a brown and I'll put the colors down below <laughs> how to make flesh color. But other than that, you can get, you can actually get a flesh color with Craft Smart. And, uh, but this is how I make sort of a shadow underneath and you build a flesh color. Sometimes I let this dry a little bit more so you can actually see it underneath. So 
So it gives the essence of rosy cheeks with skin on top. And uh, so Art Lover 101, I know you wanted blending and I hope I've answered your questions. If you have any more questions, please don't hesitate to ask me. And it's all about really just getting in there and trying, getting in there and working with the paint, not giving up, not getting frustrated. So, well, getting frustrated. Hmm. <laughs> I get frustrated all the time, but if you get frustrated, you walk away, you take a breath, you relax and you come back to it and you can see it in a different way and you uh, take a different angle and you work at it again. I've been painting for a very long time and these things I've learned, I've learned through trial and error, and you can do it too. You just have to keep doing it. You're going to have a lot of canvas that you're going to just be, have be practice canvas and you're going to throw them away because, eh, you know, maybe they're not going to be great gifts or something like that, but that's okay. That's okay because they're going to be canvas that you learned how to do things like this. And then you, will begin to make great pieces. So you can do it, keep going. Again, if there's anything else, anything that I've missed or anything that you want me to cover, please write it in the comments below. I'm happy to answer your questions. My email is down in the comments as well. You can email me and ask me questions. All right, you guys, thank you to all our subscribers and uh, please like and uh, share. We love you and we're growing. And thank you, it's all because of you. Thank you so much. We love you guys. Bye.